Okay. Is this thing on? Testing, looking at OBS, visual confirmation, the meter is moving. Which indicates sound is happening. Which indicates I've done it correctly. And that I didn't mess up all my hotkeys with my messing around I was doing. I was trying to make some new shortcuts. Uh, I hope I didn't butcher any of them. Also, they're not going to be very useful right now because I have nothing to apply them to. But maybe if I get a chat bot in the future or some audio notifications eventually, maybe it'll come in handy. But I still got to work on that. I got to I gotta figure out how to do... I can look that up midstream at some point, probably. I probably won't be able to implement it, but I can look it up. How to do that. Which MP3 file shall I choose, though? That's the real question. But for now, uh, today I'm going to do some more character iteration on the lady that was on stream yesterday. But this time, instead of hair, it's going to be outfit. So we're going to do a bit of that. I don't even know what to look up. I have character inspiration in Pinterest, as I always do, as many people probably do. And then I have some of the ideations I did beforehand. Uh, on separate clip, I don't know how to have a separate view window. I know you can with Clip Studio. I just don't remember. But for now, I'm just gonna quickly look up how to have audio notifications for streaming OBS. Or do I have stream maps? I have stream labs. Oh, they do have that. Look at that. They got it all. They got all sorts of stuff you can do here. There's this video from a man with very beautiful eyeballs who's telling me how to create my own sound alerts. It's just an observation. He's got to be wearing some makeup, right? Like, what is that? There's got to be some mascara going on there. Too well defined otherwise. All right, here's the here's the freaking screen. Here's the anything that matters. Aside from me talking about a bunch of garbage. There I am. Okay. Alright, here she is. Um, here's some of the other... Am I on the right one? No, I am. Okay, just making sure. Here, no, this here. These are some things that I had. Uh, all planned out for various points of the story. Some little ideas, some variations and concepts. Uh, what I do have to do is go to my Pinterest board because I do got stuff for character design influence and I'm sure some of it was intended for this lady at some point. Why do I have 10 followers on Pinterest? How do you, what do you even follow people on Pinterest for? Up until uh, a few months ago, not even a month ago, like a few weeks ago, that was more followers than I had on Twitch. And I don't even know why. <laughs> why, do I have, why do you have followers on Pinterest? Character design, there it is. I was looking for my board. I found it. How many pins do I got on this thing? 426. That's a lot of pins. How am I ever going to sift through all of this now that I've put so many here? Oh, God. I'm getting choice paralysis already. And I just got here. Alright, I guess we could, um... Take it one at a time. We could apply ourselves a little mood board here. One thing we gotta out. You know what we can do? Do you, in fact, know what we can do? If not, I'll be sure to tell you. What we can do. And make, a, make, a, make a red. Make a thing. Make a perception check. No. We can make a list of things we're gonna do. And by things we're gonna do, I mean attributes that this character has. So what is she? She is uh, she is spiritual. I was gonna write religious, but it's more of a spiritual thing. Uh, and then we can sort of tie that into 
raised in monastery. So, you know, that sort of, uh, what does that entail exactly? Probably some robes, at least for one concept. Or loose fitting garb. Probably some textiles or patterning. She is also very acrobatic. She is, uh, that's one of her things that she's got. Athletic. She may be in a monastery and a, just basically like a, are there, do you call female monks monks also? Or do you call them something else? Term for female monk. What do you call them? They're just called nuns? I thought that was like a, exclusively a Christian thing. But apparently I am wrong. Call them nuns. The female counterpart of a monk is a nun. Alright, apparently it's just all over there. You just call them a nun. You can also call them she monks or monkess. That sounds a little too bizarre to be real. I don't think I'm gonna do it. In English, the term is, oh, I'm a Kiora page, that's how you know it's going to be accurate, for sure. Is it translated as none? Okay, I guess it's just not that interesting. Interesting, okay. What does she got? She's got magical powers at some point, that is going to be a factor. But not immediately, I don't think. It's going to be sort of a... a turning point. So maybe we'll just put that on like a... like a, a bit of this. That's a squiggly of hes hesitation. Let's do... Uh, should we do a list of potential influences? Potential influenza. What do we got? I was thinking, you know, you got like the Indian attire. Indian dresses, perhaps. I don't really have like a coded, or at least an intentionally coded inspiration for her culture. But if I did, one of the things that pops into my head occasionally is, uh, you know, some sort of Hinduism, Tibetan Buddhism, Buddhism in general, some sort of Eastern-inspired spiritual culture and attire affiliated with that. That is sort of, it's almost like a fusion, because that's all that fantasy is. It's a fusion of cultures. I mean, literally everything is medieval. It's just like, is this from Scotland, Ireland? Is this European? Is this like Brit UK? Where are we? And it's like, it's probably, if it's a fantasy story, it's probably everything. That's just how it is. It takes the world and it boils it down and abstracts it into concepts. And that's probably why I like it so much as a genre. What else do we got here? Um, let's take a look at some of these and see what I can glean from my own things that I've done. Okay, so for stuff like that, this is like the uh, the outfits here and here, and sort of even like here. These are sort of like picked out for her out of necessity, based on circumstance. So I don't know if I need to really focus on those as alternative, because from a narrative standpoint, they're not going to matter that much. It's not really like embodying character. If anything, it'll be the transition from stuff like this and this into something more like perhaps this or even these for certain parts of the story that will be more interesting so they're just there to provide contrast so i think we can just focus on the main outfit or the main idea for a singular outfit one that's more similar to this and we can get along just fine with one what is the um there was oh yeah we could get our mood board i suppose I freaking guess, I think, maybe, perhaps. So 
so I have a few. Well, let me um, I'm gonna open up another Pinterest tab and start compiling stuff. Let me do that. In this, in, these Indian patterns and these Indian dresses and the patterns on these dresses is what I was trying to articulate. Very intricate. <laughs> Probably far too intricate for what I'm trying to do. But I'm just kind of getting an idea for form here. I do like the ones that are, um... They're like this. I'll, go, I'll, I'll put it on screen. Or they're sort of just like... Over one shoulder, and then you got the, uh, excuse me, there we go. And then there's just like this shirt, that they, this undershirt over here is sort of a, it's just like, I don't even know, I wish her arms were not here, so that I could see how this fabric even functions. In what way is this sleeve even on you? How are you wearing this? How does this, how does this work? Does it just go over the shoulder? Am I overcomplicating it? Probably. Probably. In fact, I'm looking at some other references. It does appear to just... That's uh, that's how it be. Now, here's one. Wedding silk cerise. Cerise? Sorry. I'm a filthy American. I don't know how to pronounce things. Let's move this here. This is a very small reference, but it's got... Oh, no. Rotate it. What's wrong with you? I'm paranoid that my timer is going to break again, because I didn't mention it, but it did break yesterday, and it said I was streaming for 10 minutes. Uh, and it said that for about two hours, so I had to keep checking my other OBS window to see how long I'd actually been streaming for. even so much looking at the dress part of it as I am uh, just like this um, this upper part here just this sort of overlapping there I want to see how that works and this neck piece this necklace kind of thing they got going on that's interesting some of them just have more more of a even know what you'd call it like a low cut thing going on as opposed to this, just have like right up on the neck. Could go for something like that. This one's pretty neat. <laughs> I do realize it's weird humming to myself because my goblin avatar can only open his mouth when sound happens. So it does. It's, there's a bit of dissonance there. It doesn't quite look right. My dude is humming. Why is your mouth open? Open mouth humming is just singing at that point. Which is not what I'm doing. Don't get it twisted. Alright, so this one's cool. I like this sash type appearance here. But how does it work, I wonder? I wish I was even remotely literate in fashion so I had any idea how... Now, any of this is worn or draped over the body. <laughs> I have no clue what's going on. Is it too much to ask for someone to do like a 360 spin in one of these things so I know what the heck is happening? Somebody, for the love of God. You know what, I'll just go back to my um, other Pinterest board of character stuff. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna do the AI method and steal. That is sarcastic, by the way. But I do got some stuff I wanna put here that I have compiled. 
I need a separate mood board layer. Here we go, there's one here. Let's go find some more. Oh, it's just uh, so hard to sort through all this and see which one was meant for which person. Or which character, I mean. Characters aren't people, they're fake. I made him up. <laughs> See, now the problem is I'm finding stuff while I'm looking that I haven't even seen before, and I'm like, oh, this is cool now, too, and I'm just, it's, the cycle never ends. The problem with the human brain is that you cannot satisfy it. If you're looking for visual inspiration, there's just always going to be like, Oh, but what about this one? Oh, that looks cool. What about this one? Yeah, what about this? And I have since, um, I have experienced that phenomenon about 40 times since booting up this confounded website. It's too easy to find stuff that looks interesting. Frankly, I'm sick of it. I'm just gonna put this over the other, over the other mood board. We'll have two separate mood boards. I think. One for live action. I can't believe I just called real life live action. One for real photographic reference, and the other for character design and inspiration. This is a cool waste piece. Let's look at that. Some cool shapes going on here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Man, this mood board's gonna cover, like, the whole dang thing. But you know what, it's worth it. I think it's important. But also, at what point do we start worrying about desaturating uh, the design, or perhaps oversaturating it is a better term, uh, with just details and ideas that aren't worth exploring? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out along the way. Just one guy, just one Spider-Man or woman, we don't know for sure. <laughs> Who is this? Can I search Google for this image? They look, this looks freaking awesome. Oh, it's a video as well. Search gimmick, search gimmage for Google? No, search image for Google is what I wanted to say. Roman does art. He, she, they, New Zealand based art blog. They got some pretty cool stuff. I'll keep that open later. Or four laser, rather. Alright, I think I've expended my newfound stuff. I can go back to the ones I already had prior. Try to contain myself for like a sec.
And I don't know how much more of this I will continue to venture into. Oh yeah, also... I should make note that the monastery she was brought up in is in a mountainous region. That would be good. Because setting is important when considering character design, obviously. Copy image. Paste image. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to cover this first one completely. And then we'll just, or however many I have. I find that the more sources we have for inspiration, the uh, the less homogenous it will see. At least in terms of, uh, you know, you gotta hide your influences. That's how you be a good artist. Everyone knows this. You don't shy away from inspiration. You just hide it so that no one can call you out for being a dirty thief. Because you are, obviously. putting this one in my Pinterest board. How long have we been streaming? Half an hour, no art done yet? Nah. Whatever. This is my stream. And you're gonna freaking like it. Now I've uh, delved into the part of the Pinterest board where I've designed some stuff for the lads, I see. But I still got a couple more for the lady. These are going to be for different outfits, I think. But it's good to have the inspirations nonetheless. I kind of like these ones too. I had a couple of these where I like this shirt. Whoops. Just kind of goes into. This sort of waist piece here. Should I have compiled all this off stream? Maybe. Good at this whole like foresight thing. That just seems like a psychic power when you say it like that. So it's like I don't got no ESP in. Absolutely not. <laughs> this mood board is getting uh, a little ridiculous. I will admit, but I only got. I, I swear, dude, it's only just just like a couple more, dude. Just a couple more. You gotta let me have a couple more. I'm almost done, I promise. I can quit anytime I want. This is the first time I've ever actually, I think, delved into this character's design in terms of their outfit uh, beyond the initial pass. And I, I do put thought into the initial character design passes, but I have it has since been a while. Enough time has elapsed to where I think I have a little bit better of a sense for design sensibilities than I did a couple of years back. So I want to try some more stuff. Sue me. Try it. I dare you. You can't. You don't know who I am. Except for Goblin. Alright, have I moved past all of the ones I compiled for her specifically? I think we have, so I can start. No, there's another one. 
but I'm gonna choose to ignore those because they're pretty similar in terms of concept to some of the stuff we already have on the board. And also we're getting back to, well, if you scroll far enough in your own interest boards, you're gonna get back to those older designs that you looked at in the first place. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's actually do a thing. Why do they got so much negative space? Hey, photographers, what is with you and all this room that you're leaving? Get that out of here. They don't pay it for they don't pay you for the white space. They pay you for the stuff in the white space. Okay, let's try to focus a little bit more on the outfit next time. Less on what's around it, which is nothing. Now to try and figure out where all this goes. God, I had a lot of layers. So many. Alright, that's all those. We'll hide the live... I said live action again. We'll, uh, we'll hide the real people. Move this over here so that I have that. Off to the side! We'll go back to this layer, and I wanted to add some details that I forgot. Mountain. And I wanted to, uh... No, that's not gonna work. We're gonna need to... Mountains. So that's where she grew up. In the mountains, in a monastery. Okay. And, uh, oh yeah, other thing. Has to... Oftentimes, conceal her. Hold on, it's getting there. Ear slash identity for story reasons. So a headdress at some point. Which is why I added uh, this this reference in particular. I believe that arrow did not show up, but it's there. I promise. Headdress. Is it called headdress? Is that one word? Is that even a word? Headdress. Headdress Elba. Headdress. See, it's a word. I knew. When you look it up, you get a lot of Native American influence stuff, which is not really what I think I'm going for, but it's good to know. But that, what, that is like the only thing coming up there. I'm pretty sure it's for other war bonnets. No, I'm not looking for that. Just a headdress. Like a headdress can be something that's not this Native American feathered war bonnet, right? It can just be something else, or am I just misusing the term at this point? Because, like, the only result that's coming up is, are these feathered caps that these guys wore. Not, not a cap, but you know what I mean. I swear I've heard the word headdress used in other contexts. I'm just going to assume that I'm right, which is dangerous to do, but I'm just going to assume that that's fine. Okay. Headdress. Slash. Uh. Cowl? I don't know. Cowl, I know, is a word for sure that is not exclusive to Native American culture. That's more like a hood, though, but it gets the idea across. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually uh, start. Isn't that wonderful? We're gonna do artwork for once? That's nuts. Now, the thing about these designs is they have to be easily replicatable for comic making so that I can repeat it without wanting to uh, die. So we're going to try and keep that in mind. 
Now, what kind of design do we start with first? I have a number of selections here. And uh, if we go back here, there's some of the ideas that I want. I wanted this like loose-fitting robe one that she would probably be more comfortable in. It's, it's like a, akin to what she would wear in the monastery itself. And it's got that sort of, you know, over-the-shoulder thing that I was looking at in regard to the Indian dress. Don't read that. Uh, that's confidential information. This one, they just kind of got the sash over the thing, and then the, Like, none of these even provide me a, a, even the faintest idea of how this works. But I think I can piece it together and make my own. Whatever. Let's, be, let's just become fashionistas today. To just make up how clothing works, I suppose. Okay. So we're gonna want... Oops. Okay. My keyboard almost fell off of its stool. That's right. I have a keyboard stool. Also, this has to be on a separate layer. So we're gonna do this. getting somewhere. I'm doing artwork. I know. I know. Everyone clap. Please. I need it. Somebody validate the fact that I'm actually, after 37 minutes, starting what I intended to do today. devices here. Just sort of the old centerfold or the draped in front of the thing. Okay, I see what I was Visual clarity here. We should have it draping over this shoulder. How are they doing this? I'm gonna have to remind myself how this works every other second. Oh, me, 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 me. I'm supposed to be sleeping right now because I have to go to work at 11 p.m. today. <laughs> Uh, horribly neglecting that.
How's this one? No, it's more like a sleeve thing they got going on here. always sort of prefer when I had it like this, where the sleeve was very long. Whoops. And it was just kind of like, yeah, at the elbow, if it was at the elbow, it's just because of that. And then you got options for this particular part. I think if she's gonna have her red necklace on, we should block that in. Which I imagine she will in this outfit anyway, quite often. Her rosary beads. As her prayer beads, I don't know if rosary, and that's probably specific to Christianity, or some subsect of Western religion, monotheistic religion. God, I hate drawing circles. <laughs> Why do I even try? Why even try when things are just so much easier with a specific tool? A uh, special ruler. Give me that circle, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whoops, that's the wrong number. Now we can just delete the ruler. Oops, we need to actually have that selection active.
Pretty sure she's wearing that. That's not the pen tool. We got that going on here. What kind of shading would be here? For this kind of attire, what kind of attire do I even want here? How form-fitting is this going to be? I have no idea. Sort of like, I guess it would end here. Do we like the midriff though? It's not the question I should ask. Do we like it in terms of the character design? I realize I haven't saved once. Probably should do that soon. just realized what's wrong why this looked strange is because this is too defined for what we got going on. For the loose fitting garb that we got.
Maybe this needs to be um, more adhesive to the waist or where it would be beneath the garb, I think. More tiling fitting there. That might be my issue. Because if we look at this, the examples I've compiled here, they don't really fray out that much. Which makes sense. The fabric is supposed to be pretty well kept here, at least in this area. Well held together. Do I have anything for the I had two little bracelets going on. Just to add some visual interest on the arm, I think, is what my reasoning was. And never forget, kids, as detailed as your character designs may be, you'll never have to be one of the animators for Vivzy Pop. You watch Hell of a Boss, you watch Has Been Hotel, the pilot, or whatever, and you're just like, thank God I'm not on the person, I'm not a person on the team that has to animate those character designs. So many shapes and details. I don't know how she found a team of people crazy enough to be able to do that consistently. Just some baggier pants, right? Okay, well, I'll go wrong one every time. Now it would be like this. One thing I've gotten better at doing is these sort of uh, loose-fitting pants wrinkles. That's one thing I think uh, that paid off and carried over pretty seamlessly from my studies of clothing. For clothing month that I did. Some regular Dragon Ball Z type loose pants wrinkles there. Quit while I'm ahead, I think. I was getting a little overzealous.
And the volume shifts on this playlist seem so radical. some point is really iron out the the legs here because I have just sort of cut them off because I didn't really anticipate to be using this drawing for the new character ideation but it had the new hair that I was liking so I figured I would just try it anyway also we should take into account her skin tone I think let's see actually let's get an accurate assessment of what her skin tone will even be because I have drawings of her with I with colored in skin and I can just sort of siphon the values off of that if I can find where she is. Here's one that I think has it decently. And we'll just take that and then we'll just scooch it on over. I know there's easier ways to do that, but shut up. You should have just made a layer for it. You could have done the yeah, I know, I could have with all the things and stuff. There's tools to make things grayscale, I know. Stop yelling at me, ah. Maybe I should have kept the hair open. Yeah, let's just freaking open it up again, okay? Let's just freaking do it. I just gotta I just gotta learn to keep these things open. I had this bluish tint, sort of. We'll try to take the neutral tone. It's right here. Blue. That is so dark. But that's how it's gotta be. I actually do think that is too dark for the purposes of concept illustration here. I have sort of lightened the blacks, I think, as indicated by the shirt there. Is this a good method? I don't know. It helps me understand what I'm doing. A little bit more clarity here. So in that sense, it's perfect.
Really should just do cleaner sketches. So that I don't have to color and stuff like this. But once we do this once, we can just kind of copy and paste most of it over to the other versions. that trumpet that I hate so much. That particular one. Man, I hope Tears of the Kingdom 1 has a story, 2 has music for once. <laughs> Breath of the Wild, we all know. Miyamoto got his filthy little hands on it with his whole perspective on video games don't need story, and then he twiddles his fingers. And he has an evil smirk on his face, and his eyes glow a little bit green whenever he says it, but he gets enjoyment out of it. And then there's that interview that came out where he tried to defend that position by saying, no, I do like stories in video games, and then it's like, oh yeah, Miyamoto, actions speak louder than words, mon frere. We all heard what you told the Paper Mario guys. And then some people are like, well, he just gave them guidelines, and it's like, brother, he's Miyamoto. They're going to listen to him and what he has to say. If Miyamoto's telling your dev team, maybe don't prioritize the story and do what, just like listen to these arbitrary rules that I have in place, you're gonna do it. You don't take them as guidelines, you listen to what he says because he's Miyamoto, and you're working for Nintendo. So yeah, it may have technically been guidelines on paper, but functionally, in terms of power structure and authority, I think even Miyamoto himself knew that him saying this video game doesn't need to have a story meant that it would most likely not have a story, or at least one nearly as compelling or intricate as it could have with new characters in a fleshed out setting that was unique. No, instead we get 40,000 toads and babams with no names. They are literally just called Toad and Babam, I'm pretty sure, for most of the game. I'm pretty sure names have just become sort of like a, an afterthought in the Mushroom Kingdom. Thank God Mario still has a name. I half expect the next Paper Mario game to just call him Red Guy. The Adventures of Red Jump Man. They're gonna go back to an old classic. They're just gonna start calling. They're gonna go take the Monster Hunter route and start calling everyone their role in the in the game, their function, as it were. This is the Jump Man. This is the Dragon Kidnapper. This is Wizard Wizard Turtle, also known as Lackey, depending on your translation. This is Koopa. This is Goomba. And it's just gonna be like that for the next 30 hours or however, however long the game would be. I've never before heard of a company just insisting on creative bankruptcy before. Like Paper Mario, I'm sure they have a ton of ideas for what could happen in it, in the worlds that they have for it. But then just being relegated to have to use Toads and Babams and Yoshis and pre-established characters. Like why would you insist on that? Just like your own creative heat death of your universes. It's like they're not running out of ideas, they're just not allowed to use them. So strange to me. gotta protect their IP man, even from themselves. Should color in her eyebrows. And 
tan the eyes here, why not darken them up a bit? has a bit of a brighter value compared to the rest of it, if I remember from the previous thing I was doing. Just leave it all sort of low contrast for now, though. I think it was like pure white in the other thing I was doing. This, what did I, I guess I had it not quite as dark as this, but still pretty, or did I have it dark? No, I had it not quite as dark. So this is generally the outfit that I was left with when I created this idea the first time. Uh, we should brighten up the eyeball. this effort, but I feel like it. So now that we've re-established what I got going on here, We can try breaking down a list of pros and cons, I think. Let's go back to this. We'll do this. Where's this thing? There it is. Layer settings, layer name, general, outline, and this is the one I just made, pros and cons. Hmm. 
crows. What do we like? What do I like? Looking at it. I like the dark valley. Four pants. And undershirt sort of thing. Those I do like. This sort of type thing going on here. I like the necklace. I think it's pretty good. That just kind of ties into her character in general. I think it's going to be pretty hard pressed for me to remove that. Hold on, I have notifications. I must get rid of them. Okay. do some cons here. Get that out of the way. Do one. Uh, bright. Value. Maybe light value is the right term. I don't like the uh, midriff. Is that how you spell that? How many letters are in there? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Midriff in this context seems out of place. I think just the, it's like barely showing up there. I think it's just meh. I don't know. Let's go back to the general outline. The athleticism, you know, I don't know if I like the sleeve. too keen on the draped portion in general. I'll have to figure out a better way to do that. It seems just kind of like slapped on. Whereas in designs like these ones, it seems like it was well thought out. It's placed around, there's a short sleeve, but it like wraps around the back here. It's interesting that it ties it together. They got this other thing going on around the waist that makes that look better. This waist piece, there's like no, it's just a tailored dress. And then this one is just like a, a cloth belt. This one is interesting too. It's got the belt and then it just kind of frays out into the fabric, which overlaps in on itself. There's some interesting solutions here. This one is kind of like a dual-sided thing. I've seen that done. Could try something more like this next time. But this is just the initial design, so we have plenty of time to iterate. See if we can. Um, where's my freaking? There it is. Uh, 
let's just sketch out the rest of the design here. This would be more for you know I have a whole thing about how characters stand that I have to be conscious of because I am known to draw the feet splayed out too far. I know this about myself. It happened all the time when I was doing college assignments. The professor would be like, "People do not stand like that," and I would be like, "You know what? You're 100 percent correct. That would be weird, and I still do it. It's something I got to be aware of." Sort of like this, though. I said more like slippers. drawn the slippers again, the whole design seems a lot more cohesive. It's almost like that's how I originally did it, and I should have paid attention to it. But I still want to alter some things, I do believe.
See, now I kind of like the midriff now that I have Shower on the rest of it, so I don't know exactly. Let's just erase that one. You know, I'll put that in like the maybe category. I'm gonna have a maybe category because I'm so indecisive. slippers they're pretty fun they're good I think those check out a simple but effective good shape nice pointed much light it's got some visual harmony with her spiky hair and then all the way down there pointed toes and the darker value ties them together I think it's a good button on either end of the design especially with the value that's slightly darker than the skin tone I think it helps it stand up so that's good Pros. I like the baggy pants. They're tucked into form fitting leg wear. I don't think the draped portion is visually is visually uninteresting. Tie that into all this slash empty. I think that's my problem. I might just need to add a pattern to it, but you know, we can solve that later. Also, I should save <laughs> for once. I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna do it now. Fay ideation. What am I on? Three now? Three. There we go. The maybe, we can add the bracelets. I don't know, if are they too dark? I just think that they stand out a bit too much on the wrist, these ones here. Maybe if they were slightly, maybe if, they, uh, if I didn't go so harsh on the dark values for it, it might be better. I think it's a little distracting having all this artifacting in this particular area when I'm trying to gauge it. Clean some of that up. Byproduct of using fill bucket tools and all that. What is this, a children's coloring book? Kind of. We got that going on. Why does this synth sound like some Mariah Carey song's gonna boot up? No, you know what it sounded like? It sounded like the beginning to uh, simply have an insert parentheses, a wonderful Christmas time, or whatever the heck that song's called. Also known as one of the worst Christmas songs of all time. Sorry, Paul McCartney, it's just bad, alright? The moon is right. The moon is right. It sounds so much like the beginning of this. It's gonna start singing any second, I'm gonna hate it. Yeah, 
be so funny if this video or this VOD got copyrighted when I upload it later. By whatever record label Paul McCartney's music is under. Probably Universal or something. So we have the original as a base now. This is, in essence, just what this was with some minor changes. The sleeve is on the other side. But other than that, this is kind of just what we had as a starting point. Original base, so we'll do that. And then everything else we do can be a variation. The only thing that's different is she has ciphers now so far. So let's try some other stuff. Let's see where we go. Let's hide the pro. Actually, you know what we can do? We should just move the pros and cons down. Move them down here. Move them on up. Move the general outline here. Keep some of our ideas in mind, remind ourselves. Raised with monastery. Raised in monastery. Looks like a W from afar. Robes, loose garb, textiles, patterns, acrobatic, athletic. Magical powers. So some sorceress, perhaps, influences. Maybe I should look at some of those. See what some people use in general for sorceress type character designs. Potential influence, Indian dresses, uh, mountain type attire, and then we can work on, I feel like we should get a baseline down before we work on the headdress idea, because I feel like that'll just be pretty simple, just throw it on top, integrate it with the rest of the design. So let's take... Um, Original base, where's number two? It would be here, apparently. Change layer name, design two. is design one design one value
Let's try something else for a switch up. While we're working on switching things up, might as well. So now that we're at the waste piece again, what do we decide that we want to do? I like the slippers. Let's add that in first. What do we like about what we've gathered here? This one's cool. I like this idea of like this double banded wraparound thing. There's got a lot of tassels, but I don't know if I want to replicate the tassels exactly. This one's cool because it's kind of like sort of the uh, tasseled fur on fur lining on the sleeve, which could be something evocative of sort of her uh, mountain monastery upbringing. Would have been cold up there that were integrated into the wardrobe, something she was accustomed to there, that could work. Also would make sense, because she's in a traveling party a lot. Traveling all the G-dang time. This one's kind of got the idea of this banded thing here, or it's kind of like the multiple layers. That, well, at least it looks like it because it creates that idea with these sort of lines here that break up the shape. And it's also got this center piece, which I always do like. It's got these armbands as well. I don't know if I want to incorporate some sort of armband in the character design, but a lot of character designs do it, and I do like it. I draw wrist bracers all the time, you'll notice here. This one I gave her like sleeveys, with those sort of over the hand type things there. These ones I, I, don't, I actually didn't draw a whole lot for her here, really just on two of them, but this here are these like, those sort of wrist braces I give a lot to characters. And I don't know if I want to give her that here, just seems like a, a crutch that I've been relying on to break up. Things that would otherwise be too samey. So I'll think it over. Now what do we do? Do we try the more tube top approach? Because some of them just got that going on. And that's just how, that's just what they're wearing. So is that a thing we should do? Is that a thing we can do? It's obviously a thing we can do, but does it fit the design brief of what I'm going for? I don't know. I don't think it does. I don't think it suits her, really. Ooh, let's try to see why they're doing it. They got the wrapping here. Maybe if we try it with uh, another draped piece here.
I just don't know. I simply don't know. said for these layers that are being added here. They have this armband here. I don't know if I like it though. Yeah, we'll just abandon that concept, I think. I don't know if it's good for what I'm going for. They lost me at the tube top. Let's see if we can go back to the before times. Focusing on the waste piece again. Something interesting here where they have like sort of a fur line thing. But I don't know. They always say when you're doing character design, you gotta try and limit how many materials you're using so that it doesn't get too overblown. That. design is interesting here because they sort of have this overlapping fabric that obscures sort of the other fur lining and I'm not entirely sure where, what flows into and out of what this coat this sort of like gambeson type material is apparently underneath everything but then the way they interlock these fabrics is a little bit more ambiguous but the, you can see here they have the gambeson type material as a dominant thing a more general like cloth or leather type thing and, the f and then the fur. Those are like the three main materials present here. It's even present over here. Some metal bits, some bone. This one is a pretty busy character design. Not one I would recommend for comic making. Unless you can easily replicate that sort of thing a lot. I am not that guy. But I'm sure someone out there is. Perfect for concept art, though. So yeah, I don't know if I, if I can even do fur for this one in particular. Try this sort of like teardrop, little like metal bangle type thing dangling around. Let's see if we can do that.
This one's interesting. They have it sort of multi-layered over here. What did I have for this kind of thing? I had like this sort of thing, and I had like this diamond shade, this sort of like keyhole thing. Hmm. And if we go here, what are some of these people doing? The only one that I really have is this reference, which is just sort of like a circular thing here. Circular cut, sort of like, oh, there's also this one here, which is probably where I got the key, this sort of like center part here. particular design. Maybe for a different one, but like it works better in this context, I think. But here, no, nah, I don't think it suits it. This on its own, though, doesn't look too bad, so there's probably something here I can do. This is interesting too, we're just sort of like the fold over, the, the sort of like cross pattern here. 
for the fabric. And it's sort of just like around the neck here, I see. Maybe the reason this works better is because they don't so much emphasize Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying all sorts of stuff right now. Maybe we'll return to that for one of the alternative variations.
It's the stinky art boy. Well, well, well. Look who came crawling back to Twitch.television. Sub Swan. Had enough of the con life as a con artist. Pun intended entirely. How's it going? I'm doing fine. I'm very tired. I don't know if you heard, but I do have a job now. And it is graveyard hours, so I should be sleeping in about half an hour. <laughs> so that I can wake up to go to work at 11 p.m. like a freaking moron. Yeah, what's the job? I stock shelves like a loser, but it's fine. I'm just using it to hold me over until something better comes along, as you do. Nobody works in retail to climb the corporate ladder except for apparently most of my crew. I can't imagine being somebody who's going to be like, yeah, I'm going to work for this store and become an assistant manager and then maybe just even a full-time manager. And yeah, that's not me. I can't do it. Now you don't have to interact with customers, right? That is the biggest plus of the graveyard hours. I don't have any old people coming up to me being like, do you know where the fettuccine is? And I'm like, I, of course I know where the fettuccine is. It's aisle four, by the way. But yeah, I don't really have to interact with anyone. Which is nice. And I get higher pay than the daytime workers for doing the exact same job because nobody wants to work nights. So that's Pog. Very nice. 50 cents an hour more than all those jabronis out there. Yeah, more. Is it full time? Not yet. They started me with part time and then they said they would work me up into full time if I worked there long enough. So uh, I don't know when, but presumably at some point it'll be full time. Freaking chumps, freaking idiots, dummies, stupid. Also, in case you haven't noticed, I'm doing character design right now, so that's always fun. In terms of how it's going. I'm trying to work some stuff out here. I see it, that is fun, it's very good, very cool. I am kind of struggling, though, because I don't know what I'm entirely setting out to do with this character. I have a list of stuff that I have to do as sort of a guideline, but they're not very good in terms of visual indicators so far. Kind of just been noodling around. This was the original base, which I kind of just uh, grandfathered in from the, or the original iteration page that I did. This one. And I've been trying to work out from there, but it's been very slow. How's it going with your stuff? Have you sold out, like, arenas of posters? That's not how selling merch works, but you know what I mean. Do you have any crazy stories to tell when you return? Of some absolute weirdos? More homeless people that you sure you can in the mouth. You ever lie? You lie to any more uh, small children? As you so often do.
your silence speaks volumes, I'm going to assume you've lied to so many children you're disgusted with your behavior. And you can't even bring yourself to speak on it. That's my assumption. And any excuse you make upon your return will be invalidated by my own bias. I don't know how I'm gonna do. I want like an overcoat thing, because where's my mood board layer? Right here. This is cool and all, this sort of just like, sort of like tank top, waistband type thing. Very tight, fitting. But I also like the drapery here, more specifically over here and here, and I have some other references of real people over here, some Indian dresses with the sashes over the shoulder, but I don't know how to incorporate them that well. You know what I could do? I didn't even try this. This would be me. So we're gonna try that. Get that mood board. Get this one out of here. Go back to the thing. Where am I? They have like a short sleeve here. And they have like a, a gilded pattern here. like even more close to the arm. I don't know. Let's take another look. Yeah, it's very, it's very close to the arm. Okay. Okay. this arm as well. Maybe it would be the neckline at this point. gilded stuff here. But if we're gonna do this, then maybe in this case we try just getting rid of the midriff part.
and this is what I'm talking about. When I get to parts like this, I feel like I need something that goes like over this to break up whatever the heck is going on. Or not going on, rather, because I need more visual interest, more of it. Never have enough. do we just go with this? We have the best of both worlds kind of thing going on. Some Hannah Montana style character design here with the best of both worlds. I think we're onto something. By we, I mean me. I don't know what you're doing, but it's definitely not designing characters right now. Although you should consider it, even if you don't have a reason to, just design a character. What's stopping you? Just do it. It's fun. All right. this in here. It's hard work, but fun. It ain't much, but it's honest work, as they say. Also, you didn't answer my question. How are your conventions? Excuse you. Good, bad, horrendous, downright, terrible, amazing, life-changing. <laughs> no worries. Hawaii was awesome, Seattle was awful, that's a shame. At least one of them was cool. And I imagine the one that you wanted to be cooler was the Hawaii one, so I'm glad that panned out well. I don't think anybody really expects much from Seattle. Except for maybe some rain. high-speed winds, perhaps. What do we got going on here? Oh, they also do this. That's cute. Look at that. Traveling to and from Seattle has always been god-awful. Last year was the same way. I can't say I have much love for this city, even though the people I met were mostly nice. They make do with what they have, and what they have is an awful city. It's not their fault. It's just, uh, you know, that's how it is.
I couldn't live in any city anymore. It's too much. Take me to suburbia any day of the week. Perfectly fine living here. Apparently the sales tax there is the third highest in the country too, so that isn't fun. Where's New York in that? New York sales tax ranking. Or maybe I should look up the state. Yeah, what states have the highest ones? Oh, we're not even in there. Oh my god, I thought we were bad. We're not even that bad, apparently. Jesus Christ. California hitting you with a 7.25 sales tax rate. Ooh, gross. Is that just on everything? That sucks. New York is actually one of the lowest. I had no idea. I should look up per city. Let's see them. Cities in U.S. with highest sales tax. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh yeah, there they are. Seattle and Tacoma, Washington, 9.6% up there in the top three. Gross! Seattle has 10.25. Dang, they must have adopted the Chicago and Long Beach one then, because that's what those two got. So they've actually raised it since this article was written, whatever this was made. This was made in 2017, so they've actually gotten worse. Awesome. That's probably so cool for people living in Seattle. Isn't that awesome? That's so good. That's so awesome and cool. Honolulu, Hawaii has 4.5% on the low end there. So it's, you see, isn't that all said? No. Hawaii just stays winning, apparently. Over Seattle, Washington. Get owned, Washington. At the other end of the scale, Portland, Oregon, and Anchorage, Alaska have no sales tax. That's because the people who live in those places are clinically insane. Yeah, Honolulu's was so low, so it was quite a jump going from one to the other. Yeah, you went through each end of the spectrum here. Literally outlined in this article. It's just everything that you went through. Absurdly high, and then absurdly low. Man, you should go to conventions in Portland, apparently, though. If you can survive. If you're not accosted by a group of neon-colored, haired individuals. I did go to Kamorica in Portland, and you live to tell the tale. Really is full of people with dyed hair. I know, I figure, I know the stereotypes. I know they're based in fact, at least for Portland. Some stereotypes you're like, well, that's just because people are trying to color things a certain way for their own agenda. But with the Portland stereotypes, I think they're just true. <laughs> I think we just all know that's just how it is over there. It's the most hipster saturated place I've ever been. Did they do this? Uh... Oh, they do. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's try it. There's no sense in the, no sense in not trying stuff. I didn't know the stereotype before I went, and then I learned firsthand that's rough going in there. With no prior knowledge of the type of stuff you're gonna be finding there, yeah, that's that's gonna be a culture shock. I like the sleeves. Do I? I don't know. I just... Oh. I just don't know. Look how overly ambitious I got today. I was like, yeah, I'll put out five bases and I'll come up with five different iterations of what I got. 
I've done one and a half. <laughs> I haven't even done the value pass for this one. Put some stuff here. You know what I can do, and what I should do is do a bit of this some polyline tool. Oh god. Maybe I should have just used the lasso tool. Ah, oh, god. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, let's just use the freaking lasso tool then. Everything sucks. Everything. Especially Seattle's sales tax. That sucks in particular. Sucks. What's that bit? Where it's like, uh, screw you, Baltimore, or something like that. I gotta watch those videos again. But just apply that to Seattle while I'm watching it. And that is how you get a really lazily done value pass layer that you can clip stuff into. It's a pro tip from someone who has never done art professionally even once. You're welcome. Speaking of people who have done art professionally, though, have you seen some of the stuff Rob's been doing in his new job? Pretty sick. He showed me one of the skins he designed for a game he's been working with. And it said, uh, you know, it, yeah, it was all fully rendered out. And he said it was cool seeing it rendered because it was almost exactly how he designed it in 2D. So they must have some talented 3D modeler translators over there. Rob has a new job you haven't known. Yeah, he's working in a game studio now. As a as an actual real concept artist, haven't spoken with him in a long while. Yeah, he's doing stuff, and it's cool to hear about. He's getting, like, legitimate resume experience. What studio? Uh, I know what game they made. Give me a sec. Uh, one second. Made by Mob Entertainment, they made... The, the Poppy's Playtime game, I don't know if you've seen like a Let's Play or you've probably seen the character for sure. If you just look up Poppy's Playtime, you'll see the big weird monster thing. But it's a pretty big game. It like blew up for him, so it's, it's pretty cool that he's working with somebody who's got like that level of notoriety like right out the gate. Good for him, he's doing what he's always wanted. Yeah, I know, it's pretty sick 
seeing him actually make headway in that career. It's pretty neat. Oh, those guys, yeah, see, you, you know, you know, you know. I know breaking into that industry is the hardest part, and he's freaking, as far as I'm concerned, he's done it. So it should be snowball effect from there. Because Rob, you know, he's we've always known he's got the skills to do that. Like he was talking about how he went to, uh, what was it, Lightbox? And he was talking to one of the ladies there. I think, I forget what company, what representative that was. But I think he said it was a Blizzard rep. And she was talking to him, and she was like, wow, your stuff is, like, actually really good. Do you work for anyone? And he was like, no. At that point, he didn't. But now he does. But at that point, he was like, no. But it's like, yeah, I've always known he's got it in him to do that stuff. Very technically proficient at what he does. Yeah, he's always had the skills, absolutely. It's good that he can actually finally start connecting in the ways that are required to get anywhere. The hard part, as it were. I'm over here already disenchanted with the idea. I'm just like, no one will want me. I will freaking carve my own path or die trying. Screw you, everyone. I no longer care. I'm still going to keep applying for jobs, but I am so over it already. <laughs> and I've only been doing it applying for jobs, that is, for like a year and a half. But that's enough. That's all it took. So I'm a very easily uh, frustrated person when it comes to uh, what basically amounts to nepotism. I don't like the idea of the workforce, and it's not about what you know, it's who you know. Always infuriates me. Like, why is it not about what you know? It should be. Why isn't it? Meritocracy be darned. But yeah, Rob's doing great, and it's cool to see. I'm just hoping that, like, at some point I just win the lottery so I can rely on nobody for the rest of my life. I don't even want to win the lottery and do all the stuff that people, like, expect you to do with lottery money, like buy boats and houses and stuff. I just want to, I want to use the money to just basically fall off the grid. I think I would be one of those people. Actually, you know what sucks? I think New York is one of those states where you have to report whether or not you win the lottery. So there would just immediately be a target on my back, I think, which would suck. Is he doing remote work for them? I'm not entirely sure. I think he actually goes into their place, like a physical location. But he might also do remote work? I'll have to ask him. <laughs> or you can ask him. We could all ask him. We could ask him at the same time, and then he'll wonder why we're all asking about this particular aspect of his work. We could just start, like, a little weird Matrix moment for him. That'd be fun. Why is everybody asking me about remote work? And then if he asks us if we coordinated that, we say no. Of course not. Don't be silly. Just actually gaslight him for no reason. I'm just curious if he's still living in St. Louis or not. I believe he is out of St. Louis at the moment. I think he did get that uh, living situation all set up with uh, his roommate, whoever they is, the unnamed roommate TM. If I'm not mistaken. And I often am, but this time I might be correct.
Point Mob Entertainment's company is located in St. Louis, according to Lincoln. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong then. I'm not entirely sure. This seems too bright. Let's darken that a bit. So maybe he is doing remote work? I got no clue. Maybe he started working there physically and now does remote work? I don't know. So clearly we need to grill him as a collective group, that's true, but at different times and without him realizing that we all uh, are in on it. Just so it's funnier that way. Slipper. Let's try the darker ones. See what's going on here. And then we'll do this, like the other one. for this spot, maybe... Alright, we need her skin tone to be more accurately reflected here, just because why not? Oh, I doubt the clipping thing on. But yeah, he showed me a video in Discord of one of the things he designed. I'll, I'll try to bring it up while I'm still live for the next few minutos. Let me go find it. I'll post it in the chat. If Discord opens anytime soon. There's only one update. Surely that can't take too long, right? He said before sitting here for 30 extra minutes. Waiting for software to do something. I want to see. I'm getting there. Give me a G-dang moment. Enjoy this digital equivalent of jingling keys in front of your face as I zoom in and out, waiting for Discord to open. Isn't that fun? Wow, look at that. Wow. Professional streamer making his viewers motion sick. That's it, I'm going to mobile Discord. This is taking too long. My eyes. <laughs> Alright, here you go. Uh, he said the one he designed is 20 seconds into the video. Uh, here. 20 seconds in. Uh, if you're curious. Chocolate Bunzo, I believe that is the one. 
if I am not mistaken. I think, uh, yeah, should be the one. I thought it looked pretty neat. And it was a, it was pretty cool conceptually, too, because it's just got, like, the gold foil on it for, like, the pants. I thought it was cool. Nice, I know, it looks pretty sick. Chocolate Murder Bunny, yeah, that is pretty much the vibe of that game studio. They make sort of, they make that horror themed kind of stuff. You already know, they made Poppy's Playtime, that's like, I don't know what it is with these horror studios these days, but every time they make a game, it's like horror themed and just a bunch of children start gravitating towards it and it just becomes it's like its own subgenre at this point like horror for children at this point and i don't know why it keeps happening yeah it's cool i do like the design it's pretty neat Mascot horror? I had no idea. Same with Bendy's and whatnot. Yeah, I, I know the other, uh, the other uh, titans of the genre, so to speak. I didn't know I had a name. Five Nights at Freddy's. They're the ones that started all this. How dare they? Turned game theory into a channel I can't even watch anymore. Freaking Matt Pat, did you know Sans Undertale is actually Freddy Fazbear? This hair. Please don't make me do that. Fine, I'll do it. You've twisted my arm, me. I gotta add this here. This is when Zelda games tried to actually have characters with emotional arcs. Interesting. Darn you, me! I blame you for this, he said, pointing into a mirror. select please how long am I stream? I gotta go to bed soon <laughs> which is weird to say at 2 3.42 in the afternoon but 
that is my life now. That is what I have to do. So strange. What doesn't kill you makes you stranger. Tommy Wiseau said that once. Your schedule is upside down. Now, upside down is a generous way of looking at it. I don't even know what I'm doing. You would think I just... It's, it's as simple as sleeping during the day and being awake during the night times, but I have, I have so poorly taken to adjusting to that correctly, as indicated by the fact that I am awake right now. The true night owl arc? I've always had a night owl arc. This is just me poorly handling having to do stuff during the nighttime hours instead of just watching YouTube videos until I pass out at like 4.30 in the morning. This is the night owl when his parents forced him to get out of the house and do something. Provides income. They didn't force me. I had to, I forced myself, honestly. My parents are too supportive to force me to do things, so and that's uh, it's a good thing and a bad thing. They should. I wish they were. I, I should have had a tiger mom who forced me to be a lawyer or a doctor or a doctor lawyer. I'm I'm I've wasted so much of my own potential by having loving parents. <laughs> I'm only half joking. You see those uh, prodigy children that have tiger moms, they can like freaking play guitar. Like just like the like masterful Spanish guitar by the age of five and you're just like, hmm. That could have been me, man. I would be unhappy and probably depressed. But it, you know what? That could have been me. At least you grew up saying, yeah, I know the problem with that lifestyle is that you're like just constantly depressed if you're raised that way. You're probably gonna have anxiety disorders like absurd of just all the time to a horrifying degree. You're gonna hate everything and not fully understand why. But you know what? You could, th that boy can play the guitar. <laughs> Depression be damned, that boy can sing or whatever. My baby niece is already showing signs of clinical anxiety, and she's eight, but hey, her mom raised her into a piano prize. that real? Oh man, I feel bad. If true. That is the way it goes, though, with uh, prodigy, prodigy uh, raising parents. More often than not, unfortunately, there's not a lot of resources out there on how to actually handle that situation. It's real, and that's a shame. Feel awful about it, yeah. It's also like, what can you even do in that situation if it's like a familial thing? Because it's like, you don't want to intrude, but also it's like, what's your duty of care in that situation? What level can you assert yourself into that situation, if at all? It's tricky. It's definitely out of my pay grade. I'm not a psychologist. I'm just a freaking goblin, dude. Right, exactly. Yeah, I have uh, those moments with my nephew. He has... He's not uh, not not with the prodigy thing exactly, but just like uh, my sister and him having some familial issues. And I'm just like, I really wish that I could say something, but it's like, it's not even really my place. I didn't raise the kid. She did. And it's like, at what point should anyone intervene, if at all? It's like, how do you answer that? It's a hard question. One that I don't think I will ever have an answer. They're doing better now, though, so hopefully, I guess the idea is to just uh, see if it works itself out. Which is kind of like a hands-off way of looking at it, but I don't really know how else to look at it. And I feel like in, the, if the, in any of those situations, with this type of family dynamic. I feel like that crops up a lot 
that sort of like, what do I even do if I wanted to help? I resorted to telling my parents so that they could talk to my brother and sister-in-law. Yeah, 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 that's a good way to do it. That's one way to tackle it. Have it just go straight to the authority figure, which is the, the, the real authority figure. something slightly different going on here it's interesting I actually do like a lot about what we've done with design numero dos here I think the waste area is a little bit more interesting here and this uh, I think I have made the sash finally work a little bit better than whatever the heck's going on here dumb stupid make me so angry mm. it looks good thank you thank you I did think the lower part here was nice. I like the slippers, they're cute. Those are neat, and they suit the design brief that I put over my, for myself over here. I like the added visual interest and flow, thank you. I do want to try uh, something with the sleeves on this, because I like the long sleeve. I like flowy sleeves, it's just a thing that I enjoy. That angry face is me looking at my own character design. Mm. And then sweating over it. Trying to do anything right. Do you like the sideburns on the character, by the way? I added them. Because I was doing some design iterations here. This was her original design. I had short sideburns on her. And I, I decided I was going to make them long. Because I think it looks better. Mm. Character design. Ugh, good. But yeah, I added sideburns. I love those. I think they're nice. I also tried a few other cuts. They give me life. I do like the 80s inspired hair. If you, in fact, if you want to see my mood board that we did yesterday, uh, this this is it. It's just so much 80s anime. And then also Casca and uh, Claire from Claymore. Is that her name? I feel like a fake fan right now. Claymore, Claire, uh, yeah, her name's Claire. I'm so smart and I love everything uh, with a passion. Let's go, yeah, this is basically, uh, and then there's Aisha because not the Turalian, by the way. We do love the 80s, I know. So then I had um, this hairstyle, but that was already, I looked at some of the other characters I had, like Blair, for example, who I can bring up again. She kind of already has like a similar hairstyle going on, so I figured I was probably not going to use this one, even though it is floofy. I do like that. I just tried a shortcut. I do like that. That's pretty neat. Some kind of pixie cut. I think at some point would be fun just to have in the story. That's the beauty of these character designs. If you're just doing like hair and costuming, you can change it as many times as you want. I brought it up before, but like Killua in Hunter x Hunter, he kind of like my character design goals in the sense that he just wears whatever, like whenever the story needs him to. I respect Tagashi for being willing to change his character designs. He does it for he does it for uh, Hisoka too. He does it for Jing. He does it for um, some other people, too. I'm sure a lot. But, like, yeah, it stands out. Killua gives me life. He's a fashion icon. He's got so many little outfits because his parents are rich. He can do whatever he wants. And I tried some updos here. I love that his outfit changes and Gon's doesn't. Yeah, Gon is just, like, steadfast and is shown in protagonist ways. He will wear the same thing until it wears out. Gon's literally the only one who doesn't because his outfit is handmade by Mito. Oh, I never thought of it that way. That's probably true, actually. He would get rid of his clothes made by his mother. Not really, but his mother, basically. Also, I tried to draw a braid. Don't look at that. 
never look at them. But yeah, the updos I had, I'll probably throw one of those in the story somehow. I don't know if I like Bangs pulled back more on her character or Bangs forward more on her character. I don't know. Questions for later, I suppose. It's cute. Thank you. We love the updo. I think they're neat. But yeah, her main design is going to be this. I believe. I do declare. Because, you know, it's just like, it's such a good silhouette for just, just like, just give your characters big hair, everyone. I've been saying it since the day I was born. My parents were very confused. They didn't know what it meant back then. But now that I'm 23, I can articulate to them that what I was talking about was that like 20 years in the future, it's going to be relevant to character design. Because I knew from that moment, straight out the womb, I was going to be an artist. I was like, big hair, me draw big hair. And they were like, what? What is he talking about? Can we get a new one? I don't like this child. This baby is saying weird things. But yeah, I think we've arrived in a decent spot. I'll try out some more variations later. And by later, I mean, I don't know, next stream. This is my mood board, by the way, from Pinterest. My new mood board. We'll try out some other stuff. This, this was mainly just a, I wanted to get a variation going on. The, uh... The base, the, as I call it, the original base. The other ones I'm going to try and go back to this and see if I can make, maybe work out some of these. Maybe some of these. Or something to do with like this one or this one. She's going to have multiple outfits. That's the general idea. I think you made good progress. Thank you. But yeah, that's what I'm going to... That's basically all for today. I had to outline all my stuff. And now I have to go to sleep. <laughs> for uh, like seven hours so I can go to work at 11 p.m. like an idiot. Pinterest is the best for mood boards? Absolutely. You know I have 10 followers on Pinterest and I have no idea why. <laughs> I don't know where they came from or why they're still there. They probably forgot to unfollow. They probably forgot they even used Pinterest. I didn't even know you could follow people on Pinterest and I don't even know why. I guess you can follow people for their other boards, but I don't know. Oh no, hold on. Before I sleep, I did notice this real quick and I want to fix this. Darken these so I don't forget. Go sleep, don't tell me what to do. Wait, hold on, that was one. <laughs> no, I should act those one well I'll think about this while I'm sleeping, and then I'll wake up and I'll be inspired. I'll have a Freddie Mercury esque a dream, and I'll have the perfect character design zap its way into my head, and I'll be like <gasps> It's time to draw the visual equivalent of Bohemian Rhapsody. But yeah, here I go. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it. I look forward to hearing as much about the uh, cons as I can. You know, the downside is I won't be able to watch uh, as many of your streams if I ever get scheduled to work on a Friday. Luckily, it is part-time right now. I'm pretty sure that my Friday this week is open. So I'll be able to hear anything that you talk about. It was fun. Wait, am I out of music? Wow, I literally just read, just ran out of music. <laughs> so let's just click back to uh, here while I end stream. I'll miss you during my streams. I don't think I'm going to miss all of them, but I will miss some of the streams. I'll be there less than I normally am, which for me is uh, profoundly devastating. But you know what? It'll be fine. I'll still catch you. Yeah, I'll catch you up when I see you. Exactly. I'll still be in. I'll pop in for a while, for a bit. But yeah, that's it for me today. I'm going to go, like I said, I'm going to go pass out. Uh, but yeah, thanks for stopping in, and I'll catch you later. And bye bye